Look at this school of stunted perch. There's just tons of them down here right now. Hoping to find a bigger grade of fish in here. That one's not bad. Man, they're so tiny, the jig head's as big as their head. It's a tiny little tungsten jig. But there's a lot of them. Oh, that's a little bit better grade. See if he'll take it. Got him. So today I'm at Fish Lake in central Washington. And this is a very strange lake and a great example of how poor our fisheries management is in the state. Uh, this lake has a 25 fish limit for perch, which makes absolutely no sense. Most of these fish are fairly stunted in size. As you can see here, that's sort of the average size fish for here, maybe eight to 10 inches. There's a few bigger fish in here, but not many. And a perch this size can lay 100,000 eggs. So it's no wonder that these lakes can quickly get overpopulated with perch and stunted. So it really begs the question, why the hell is there a limit on perch in this lake? We should be encouraging people to just clean these fish out of this system. So not only do they compete with each other for food resources, what scientists refer to as high intraspecific competition, that is competition within the same species, which leads to stunting. But, you know, for perch, it doesn't really matter because and some other fish, when they get stunted, those females won't produce as many eggs. But even a tiny little, you know, 8-inch perch can produce 36,000 eggs. A 10-inch perch can produce 100,000 eggs. And a larger female, you know, 12 inches or more, can produce up to 300,000 eggs. So there's really no risk of over-harvesting these fish. I mean, ever since I've moved here, they've always had this 25 fish limit, which makes absolutely no sense. And as you can see, as soon as I drop the camera down, there's just a ton of perch. Look at that cloud of perch that comes in like that. Isn't that nutty? Look at all those guys. There's so many of them, they want to eat the camera. And most of these guys down here are just tiny little six, seven inch perch, which aren't really that valuable other than like dog treats. Let go of that thing, little guy. Ah. Got the little one. Of course, what can I do with that? I'll hardly be able to get any kind of fillet off of it. And if I really wanted to improve the fishery, I'd harvest that. But as an angler, I'm just not interested in harvesting four inch perch. And if it was a no limit lake, well, at least I can, you know, kill it and leave it on the ice for wildlife to use or something. But instead, I can't. These fish, I'm bringing them up and they're coughing up these bloodworms here. These are chironomid midges. These are actually a really important food resource for the trout that they stock in this lake. And they stock a good number of trout in here, including something like 15,000 catchables, another 50,000 put and grows so those are smaller fish that uh, aren't as at risk as being eaten. And then they put like 200,000 fry. Now some of those fry or fingerlings can be food for the bass and such in this lake. Yeah, I'll take that one. You can just see there's just a constant parade of perch on the on the graph. So you have this lake that's overburdened with perch, overstocked with trout, which means you're going to get stunted trout, you're going to get stunted perch. And what's worse is, you know, a number of these perch I'll cut open, they'll have parasite loads because there's just too many of them in here. And when you get this kind of density of fish, you get more disease. And to make matters even worse, they're now even introducing kokanee. So you have intraspecific competition between the perch themselves for food resources, which is leading to stunting and higher rates of disease, so parasites. And then you have competition with all those hundreds of thousands of rainbow trout that they're putting in the lake, which is leading to stunted rainbow trout. Got hit on the way down. What if this is one of these perch, or if it's a trout? It's a perch. Oh no! Oh, he got away. Now my hands are cold. 
Yeah, so you have stunted perch, stunted trout, and now you've thrown kokanee on top of the mix, which kokanee and rainbow trout and perch are competitors with each other. So this is another example of interspecific competition. That's competition between species. And there's been some really interesting work done by one of the biologists in Connecticut who manages their kokanee program. And he looked at stocking rates of rainbow trout in lakes with their kokanee because they were trying to improve the size of their kokanee. And he showed that the more rainbow trout that they stocked in the lake, the smaller the kokanee got. So he was dialing back on the number of trout to try and improve the size of the kokanee. That's just actually really good management is what that is. is it's really refreshing to see something like that in uh, a fish and game biologist because here in Washington State, they just seem to just dump as many fish as they can into a lake and hope for the best instead of strategically trying to oh, create a quality fishery. They, they seem to think all we want is numbers. Oh, there's a, I got him. Oh, yeah, I got him. So what would I do if I had control of this lake? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that 25 fish limit. If people want to take home 50 or 100 perch, then let them do that. That's not a problem. The fishery can sustain it. This lake has a uh, nitrogen and phosphorus problem. It gets algae blooms in the summertime, most likely because of the number of houses on the lake and the leaking septic systems, which is a common problem. They're inputting too much uh, nutrients into the lake, which is usually not an issue for most of the lakes in the mountainous northwest. Usually they're cold and unproductive, but this lake's actually fairly productive with large shallow weed beds. And like I said, it's got that additional input, most likely from leaking septic systems. So I haven't confirmed that, that's just my hypothesis. But yeah, take that 25 fish limit off. And then what I would do is I would mirror what they are doing in British Columbia, which is instead of putting lots of tiny uh, trout into the lake, they're actually putting much larger trout into the lake, releasing them at a larger size large enough size that they'll prey on small perch and things like that and that will allow those fish to get large really quickly it'll also help uh, suppress those spiny ray populations in washington state they seem to rely really heavily on uh, tigers to do this but they plant the tigers at such a small size and i've also noticed that tigers just even in lakes where they have a lot of food they still starve to death uh, they just don't seem to do very well in every lake. Some lakes they do exceptionally well. But I'd rather just see some bigger, like, Gerard strain rainbows or something. A more aggressive strain of rainbow and larger strain of rainbow brought in to target these spiny rays. And I'm not sure what the end goal is with putting kokanee in this lake. If the goal is to have a viable kokanee fishery here, you're going to have to dial back on all those tiny rainbow trout fry and fingerlings that you're putting in here because those fish directly compete with kokanee for food because they're all feeding on those smaller prey items. If you put bigger trout in here, then it won't matter because bigger trout have switched to a much larger food base. Whereas, look at this thing, I think. Whereas kokanee are gonna be feeding on those smaller invertebrates and zooplankton, the same thing that smaller trout are. So I wouldn't be putting 200,000 trout fry in here uh, while I'm also trying to kickstart a kokanee fishery. Maybe they're just putting the kokanee in here as food for the perch and that's fair. You know, that makes sense. I would think most people would rather see a viable kokanee fishery. And in order to layer that on top of all these perch and all of these trout, you're going to have to cut back on something. And the two easiest things to do is to simply put less trout fry in here and keep the same number of kokanee. They put about 60,000 kokanee fry in here. And then finally, I would lift the limits on yellow perch, let people take them home, clean out, and lower some of this perch density. That's a nice fish there. I know from experience as a scientist that fisheries and wildlife management isn't easy, but this stuff is just a no brainer. It's like basic entry level undergraduate. <laughs> stuff and i just don't understand why they can't get it right anyways guys i'll see you next time out on the water right on the ice just remember fish smarter not harder bye guys